when the stakes are high, it's important to be able to reevaluate your situation because if you don't adapt when the other team has already adapted, you're going to be in a bit of a pickle. Hey guys, my name is Jim Basker with Leaderboard Esports and this is What the Casters Missed. We're on Oasis. It's map 3 of 4 in this series. London Spitfire are already up 2-0. And on Oasis itself, they're at 84%. You can see there on your screen. And, you know, currently in the clip, the LA Gladiators do have control of the situation momentarily. But the London Spitfire, in very commanding fashion, gesture landing with the Earth Shatter. And then Birdring following it up with the Graviton Surge, going to be doing a large amount of damage to the Gladiators. And at this moment, it's important to note that they realized that too. And they were like, hey, let's cut our losses. Surefore and Void both hop off the edge here. And they're like, okay. What are our best chances in 16% to maybe contest this again? Group up as a team and fight a six from spawn. Very smart, and that's exactly what they do. Sure for Void, off the edge, Spitfire go for the cap, they get it, and then at this point they push up to the LA Gladiators spawn. Good move from them, they want to take that fight super early, this is what they're going to do. They come on in, LA Gladiators, at this point, before the Spitfire have even realized anything is up. Spitfire is already on the attack. You saw them starting to move towards hydration. The LA Gladiators make the swap. Surefor goes on a fair. This is huge because both these comps are, well, they were triple tank, triple support. London Spitfire, Gesture, Bird Ring, Fury. That's Ryan, Zarya, Diva. The, the LA Gladiators were running the same thing, but now that Surefor is on fair, it's going to throw a wrench into things. Let's see how this plays out. And uh, Spitfire, I could tell you, this much they weren't expecting it they set up in the mid but Dosen gets picked off by sure and after that it's the cookie is just crumbling man sure for it that was such a good pick they realized that triple tank triple supports there's no hit scan nobody to deal with this long range bombardment of damage coming out from sure for and they just make absolute use of like they wreck the london spitfire and just after like they recovered so quickly and i think that's absolutely huge you know, it, it worked out really well for sure for and it's like they the london spitfire could have done something differently here and it's like bird ring you know he's holding on to his ultimate they're not making any sort of drastic changes like the la gladiators and you know he comes back he does get that graviton surge off but sure for he responds with the barrage and although it's not absolutely gigantic it doesn't kill that many people the damage is literally done he picks up profit with the tail end of it and you know he doesn't have to do much else he was laying down damage the entire fight and it worked out super well the la gladiators fantastic job sure for really smart picking that fairy you know we get it you're good at the hero triple tank triple support nobody can hit you yeah i agree nobody can hit you i wonder what happened london spitfire what happened i totally think you guys could have won that fight and, you know, I really think they got overzealous, overconfident. It exposed them entirely in the Los Angeles Gladiators. Swooped right in, took the advantage when they saw it. So, you know, it all starts here. Spitfire capped that point. As soon as they capped the point, they push into the Gladiators' spawn. At this moment, they are thinking, okay, we push here because we want to take the fight early. You know, ideally, we only have to stall for 10 11%. That's all we've got left to do. So if we got to pick now, absolutely huge! Spitfire set up. They see hydration, their eyes light up. They're like, okay, get this kill, get this kill. Surefor pops out of spawn with Farah, gets a pick on the Bedosan almost immediately. Now what? Step two. When your primary healer goes down, what do you do? Look at on the side of the London Spitfire. They've got closer on Lucio and they have Prophet playing Brigida. That's literally, literally two heres. Heres. Two heres. Two heals per millennia like there's no way you're gonna survive any sort of damage from anybody so you know ideally you take a page out of the los angeles gladiators book you know you think what did sure for what did void do what are the greats before me how do they work this they jumped off the map this is a situation where it works to your advantage everybody group up go left off the far left ledge off the map you regroup and spawn take that 6v6 and that's Really what should have been done, but what actually happens? Spitfire instead, start backing up Gesture in this moment. He's about to go off the edge, and then he decides, no, wait, staggering, great, fantastic thing. I'm going to go back to site, let myself stagger some more. Picks are traded, picks are traded, lots of things happening, but London Spitfire, once again, losing their tanks at this point. And it's like, I get, you know, I understand what they're thinking in this exact moment, right? Gesture and Fury down. They want to get the regroup. They've been staggered for a second, so Bird Ring's going to be waiting on that Zarya. But, you know, moving forward, if you look just 
at the next team fight, what they decide to do here, they group up as six. And Birdring still on that Zarya. He's got 65% on his ultimate, you know, and they're thinking once again, the London Spitfire, okay, we've got this down, right? We just walk in with the Shatter, Shatter the Diva first, so she can't eat the grab. Birdring, get the grab afterwards. It's a good combo. We've done this, guys, right? We just did this. It can happen. I get it. But, you know, ideally, you know, if you had a Widowmaker, maybe Birdring, one of the best Widowmakers in the Overwatch League currently, what if he just started off that fight with a pick onto Sureford instead? He, Sureford doesn't have a Mercy following him around. He's open, he's exposed. It would be an easy pick for literally anybody on the Spitfire team to make. You put them on any hit scan, you can get that kill. Start that fight as a 5v6. Works out in your advantage. But instead, very confident here, and I'm gonna let the clip play, and you can just watch how this team fight devolves. They group themselves up into the right side here. Los Angeles Gladiators do massive amounts of damage in a super close range, and this entire time, Spitfire getting picked apart over and over again. And it's like, I get it super ambitious with that ult. They want the combo once again. It's just almost there. You know, Birdring finally gets his grab, and he's like, okay, this is the time. Bedosin's coalescing, sure for her. she's trying to deal with the problem at hand, and Birdring walks in. He's like, okay, this is the play. We're going to take it home. 3-0, the Los Angeles Gladiators grab comes out. Sure for responds with the barrage, not doing a massive amount of damage, but turns at the last second, gets the pick onto Profit, and you know, that's literally all that he needs to do. The damage, he did lots of splash damage to the rest of the team. His job, his duty has been performed. If you keep watching the rest of the clip, Los Angeles Gladiators steamroll. They just spread them apart. And it's like, I get it. Super tempting to hold on for that combo. But ideally, you're going to reset. You're going to get your Widowmaker, your star player, on that star character and let him do work. Make it a 5v6. And I think that's the play they should have made. Being able to think critically in those tense situations really defines what makes a good Overwatch League team. Los Angeles Gladiators, you know, sure for it, recognize the triple tank, triple support, and they reacted accordingly. The Spitfire, all they had to do was go one step further and react back. They have Bird Ring, they have the Widow. It could have worked. The story we were telling could have been absolutely different, but, you know, that's how the cookie crumbled. That is it for this week, guys, on What the Casters Missed. My name is Jim Basco. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that bell icon to become part of our notification squad today. To find out when we're going to be uploading our videos, usually a few times per week so if you love content about overwatch league of legends or esports in general you're gonna want to keep your eyes peeled my name is jim basker once again with leaderboard esports and we'll catch you guys next time